Do you want to know how to claim business losses on your tax return? Then stick till the end of this video. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as terrific as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to claim business losses on your tax return. This is an important question because if you have a business loss in a specific year, can you write it all off? If no, can you deduct a partial loss? And what happens to the, remain to the remaining balance? Does the Internal Revenue Service allow the deduction of all types of business losses? So I'm answering these questions and others in, in the video. Keep in mind though, folks, that writing off your business loss depends on whether you have other income, the legal type of business you own, and whether your, your investment in the business is at risk, in whole or in part. So limits on business losses vary by vary for corporations versus other types of uh, businesses. So I'm talking here about sole proprietors, LCs, partnerships, and S corporations, and uh, you have to also understand that the business uh, business uh, types that have passed through taxation, that is, their business profits and losses are included with their personal tax return. Those business, those business, uh, uh, those business that have passed through taxation, rather, they are in a in a special category that we'll talk about. Now, the IRS regulations on business losses are complicated, but in this video, I'm tr I will try to simplify things here. How to calculate your business loss. Some businesses that have a loss can claim that loss to reduce their taxes with certain limits. So to calculate the amount of the loss, all you have to do is add your business income and subtract business expenses on your business tax return, so your overhead. So if your deductible expenses are greater than the, uh, than the income you reported, you have a loss. And you can start the process of calculating a net operating loss and NOL. As it says, the NOL is a loss on your business operations, not investments. Very important. So to run this NOL calculation, you can take some deductions in full like rent or office expenses and other deductions for uh, depreciation or home office costs are, are kind of limited. The total amount of your loss may be limited in one year. So when that happens, you may be able to take that loss in a, the loss in a previous year called a loss carry back or a future year called a loss carry forward. This is kind of important. Let me repeat that. So you may be able to take the, the loss that you can. So let's say you let's say you had um, let's say you have a, a five thousand dollar loss this year and you can only deduct three thousand. So you have two thousand left, two thousand dollars of loss. So you can, you can have a carry back. In other words, you can go back and amend the taxes of last year so that uh, you can apply that 2000 extra to that tax. Or you can do a carry forward, a loss carry forward. In other words, you can apply the 2000 to future profits. Either way, let's say if last year you, you paid, uh, you paid a, a certain amount of taxes, by applying the carry back loss to the to last year's return, you are reducing your uh, your your fiscal liability there. So the IRS might send you a refund. The same applies. So the, the, this is a similar scenario for the future for a uh, carry forward loss. What you're doing is you are actually reducing the income tax you have to pay in the future. So business losses result when expenses are greater than income. You may be able to take all a part of your business loss for a year. You can do that to offset other income to reduce your overall taxes. Now, when we talk about business losses, we talk undoubtedly about uh, something called um, deferred tax assets and liabilities. It's a very complex topic. I'm not going to go into details here, but the bottom line here is that there are some some accounting items like depreciation, for example, and uh, am amortization. The, uh, depreciation is when you actually the you actually um, I would say uh, you you divvy up 
the cost of a, of a capital equipment of a capital asset over several years the the years are called useful life of the asset so the the thing here is that to make things very simple the accounting treatment that the irs has versus what the uh the the basic accounting standards have you have a, a difference there so that's why you have a deferred tax asset or liability because the amount might might be different the same applies for amortization amortization is the the depreciation if you will of intangible assets such as patents and copyrights and uh, other kind of uh, ip assets let me just talk talk about the fact that new tax law changes a lot of uh, the treatments that we have had in the past for business losses whether we're talking about depreciation or, or amortization or other business business expense the other business expenses the new tax law has has changed that so the 2020 coronavirus aid relief and economic security act aka the cares act has made several changes to tax laws to ease the burden on businesses affected by COVID-19. So these changes affect business taxes in 2018, 2019, and 2020. So what the authorities have done is they have done a re they have retroactively applied the uh, provisions of the CARES Act to 2018 and 2019. So business loss rules from the previous law, the 2017 Tax Cut and Jobs Act, will be restarted into in 2021. So the CARES Act removed the limit on business losses for small businesses, not corporations. That is, there are no limits to how much business loss you can take for the year. So the carry forward and the carry the the, the carry uh, back that we had I had discussed earlier does not apply as part of the 2020 CARES Act. The the IRS says that you can file an amended tax return for 2018 and or 2019. If your business losses were limited to though for those years it also allows businesses to carry back losses from 2018 2019 and 2020 to previous years against income from those years so finally another important element of the cares act is that your small business not corporations again may use net operating losses to offset your personal income with no limits so the idea here is that the authorities are trying to pitch in and trying to help the small business community actually um, live up again. So they, they, they're trying to, through the CARES Act, they have made things a lot easier for small businesses when it comes to applying uh, losses to past past uh, income uh, income statements or future income statements. One thing you have to be very careful about is that the, the tax laws constantly change. Tax laws always change. So the 2020 CARES Act is uh, set to, uh, the authorities have made it clear that it will run until 2021. The question is, we have no certainty as to what will happen in the future or whether or not Congress will come with a second law, with a second piece of uh, legislation to change things around. So the, 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 the only thing you need to know here is that you wanna calculate your business loss as you have done in the, in the last few years and as the legislation change, you apply those changes to make sure that you are taking as much, as many benefits as possible. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still talking here about how to claim business losses on your tax returns. Let's talk a little bit about the previous law changes for business laws business losses so i was talking earlier about the 2020 coronavirus air uh, coronavirus aid relief and e economic securities act the cares act let's talk about the the previous law so the 2017 tax cut, tax cuts and jobs act has made several significant changes to the way business losses are handled so the tax loss to carry back is no longer available you can still carry a business loss forward to future years future tax years but you can no longer carry a net operating loss back to past years. The amount you can carry forward is also limited to 80% of taxable income, but you can go forward for an unlimited number of years. Tax laws, tax loss carry forwards are not available to corporations. They never were anyway. So the Internal Revenue Service changed the limit on excess business losses based on the total income of the taxpayer. Loss limit though, do not apply to corporations. In other words, you cannot write off 
aka deduct business losses if they are too large. Let's talk about the types of business businesses and, ex, and excess business losses. Excess loss limits apply to businesses that are not corporations. So these business types are sole proprietors and one owner LLCs. Those are called single member LLC. So if you are a sole proprietor or a one owner LLC who calculate business taxes on Schedule C as part of uh, your personal tax return, then you are okay when you file your when you file your 1040 so the nol for you will be validated the business types that they also qualify are partnerships and multiple member alcs that calculate business taxes on a partnership tax return with income passing through to the individual partners here we're talking about 1065 form 1065 and this 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 um, 1065 partnership tax return is more of a quote unquote FYI tax return to the IRS because the 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 owners the, the business owners the partnership the partners do not pay taxes the partnership rather the partnership does not pay taxes on that tax return it's just more an FYI in other words the the Internal Revenue Service gets that 1065 uh, partnership income tax return to be able to reconcile the amount indicated on the uh, return with the amounts that all the owners the partners have filed with the IRS that's why I call it an uh, FYI return and then you have S corporations that calculate business taxes on form 1120 with income passing through to individual owners it's the same thing here it's the same thing if you file form 1120s for S corporation the the IRS this is a, an FYI return also the corporation does not pay taxes to the IRS, the owners do, which is why it's called um, a pass-through entity. Let me now talk about excess loss. What is it? What is excess loss? The limits on excess business losses have been dropped for 2018, 2019, and 2020 taxes, as I said, because of the CARES Act, because due to the, thanks to the CARES Act, that there will be a, a better formulation here so this excess losses excess business losses will be effective again for 2021 taxes so the internal revenue says that if you you have an excess loss if your total business deduction so your total business deductions are more than your total gross income and your business profits plus $250,000 or $500,000 for a joint return let me just say it more simply so Taking any loss more than 20, 250000 for a single taxpayer or half a million for a joint return is considered excess and that excess amount cannot be taken as a loss on your tax return for the year. Let's just explain a little quickly how excess loss limit works. Let's say Donald, a single taxpayer, had a, had a business loss of $150,000 this year. Since it was less than 250000 he can take the full 150000 of loss on his tax return this year. Now, let's say Elizabeth, a single taxpayer, has a business loss for the year of 400000 This amount is greater than the 250000 limit, so she can only take a quarter of a million of loss on this year's return, leaving 150 k of loss that she might be able to carry forward to the next year or beyond. This example, though, folks, bear with me here. They are oversimplified. The calculation of excess business loss is complicated and other factors on an individual tax return, including at-risk rules and passive activity rules, may affect the excess loss. How do, you, how do you determine excess loss? Let me give you a few steps here. So, your total income and losses from all businesses and personal sources are collected on your personal tax return. You must calculate your net operating loss this is the loss from normal business operations using specific IRS methods. So before you calculate the excess business loss, you must first apply number one, at-risk rules, and then passive activity rules. Let's just break it down here. At-risk rules limit your losses from business to your amount at risk in the activity. So this at-risk limits apply to partners and S corporation shareholders and certain closely held C corporation owners. At-risk rules also apply to specific types of business. If your business is a sole proprietor or a single member ALC, 
filing your business tax return on Schedule C, you'll need to use IRS Form 6198 to compute and report your at-risk situation. Now, this, is, this was for at-risk rule. Let's talk about passive activity. This also limits business loss deductions. Business losses may be limited if they result from what the IRS calls passive activity, that is, a business in which the owner does not participate on a regular, continuous, or substantial basis. Losses resulting from passive activity can only be deducted up to the amount of income that, that from that business. So if you want to have more details about at risk rules and passive activity, you want to see IRS publication 925. We actually uh, have a, a screenshot here that we just put for you. And uh, the, the publication 925 is great because it details everything you need to know. So uh, passive activity limits, who must use this rules, passive activities, activities that are not passive activities, passive activity income and deductions, how you group your activities, how you can recharacterize your uh, passive income the dispositions and how to report your passive activity loss. The the IRS publication 925 also talks about at risk limits, who is affected, activity is covered by the at risk rules, at risk amounts, amounts that are not at risk, and reductions of amounts at risk. And there's uh, the uh, the so called recapture rule. So so after those rules have been applied, you can consider how much loss you can take for the year. So the form used to calculate this loss is in IRS form. This is IRS form 461. The form is called 461 and it's limitation on business losses. So the information needed to uh, calculate is on the form. So it assumes that you are filing a 1040 form for your personal taxes. So if your business loss for the year is greater than the loss allowed for the year because uh, it is over the excess loss limit, you may be able to carry forward the excess loss to a future year. So you, if you want to have more information, you can you can see instructions for form uh, 61. You got to look at form 6198 for more information in terms of instructions, in terms of uh, the process to take. Or if you're not um, if you're not really uh, great with tax issues, it's just better to contact your CPA or tax advisor. And that tax advisor can also be an EA, an enrolled agent. So CPA stands for Certified Public Accountant. So this is a, this is an expert in uh, when it comes to taxes, auditing, and uh, and accounting. So he or she can help you. So it is one of those things when it comes to business losses, folks. Unless you have experience in the field, it's better to just outsource it. It's one of those. It's one of those sections you don't want to try by yourself unless you are positive you know what you're doing. It is already complicated for even experts. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are having a conversation here around how to claim business losses on your tax return. Let's talk about partnerships, LLCs, and S corporations. So partners and partnerships. LLC members and S corporation owners pay tax on their share on their share of the profit of the business. They can also offset losses up to the amount of their investment basis in the business. How capital losses may be limited. Now, this current video talks about business operating losses. If you if you remember, I've been talking about null net operating losses. So capital gains and losses on the sale of capital equipment and investments are handled differently for tax purposes from operating losses so for capital losses passed through to your personal tax returns if your capital losses are greater than your capital gains you can claim the excess loss if it, if it is the lesser of three thousand fifteen hundred if married filing separately or your total net loss on your form 1040 schedule d let me repeat that if your capital losses are greater than your capital gains you can claim the excess loss if it is the lesser of 3000 or your total net loss on form 1040 schedule D. The 3000 changes to become 1500 if you are married but filing separately. This is it folks. Just wanted to have a quick recap with you here and uh, I spoke to you about how to calculate your business loss, the new tax law changes for business losses, 
I spoke about the previous law changes for business losses, the types of business and excess business losses, the types of businesses rather, and excess business losses. What is excess loss? How excess loss limits work? How, how does it work in, uh, in practice? Determining excess loss, the steps you have to, 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 to go through. And I spoke about partnerships, LLCs, and S corporations, and how capital losses may be limited. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.